We're live. What's up? Uh, <laughs> can you hear me, Mike? Are you here? Are you here? Can you hear me? Is it all good? Tonight we are talking about the subject of compound boost, which is awesome because if you guys haven't seen it yet, make sure that I just put up a video on compound boosting a 38. What is this? My oh, cord, cool. So, Mike, let me know what what's up. Can you hear me? Uh, I just put up a video where we did compound boost with meaning a turbo and supercharger on a 3800 Series 3 V6, although the 3800 Series 2 works equally well. And I have one sitting there, but it just needs a little bit of work. <laughs> and I could do it on both of them. So hopefully uh, you guys got a chance to take a look at that. It was really awesome. And now if you guys haven't been following the series, in the first part of this, I have, we took, I have gotten a couple of these now because I was trying desperately to get this thing ready for engine masters when we when I was down there at West Tech. We were I was thrashing. These were 18 hour days for me because we would do I, I went down beforehand and tried to get everything ready and then filming during the week. And then after filming, it was like work until midnight or one o'clock every night so they could get everything ready for the next day. So this V6 was a big part of it. And first I broke the Hemi because <laughs> I didn't because we I filled it full of water. Basically, you didn't put the plugs in the in the um, cylinder head so that because that makes the heads reversible on the Edelbrox. So it got water in it and, and reverse hydro locked it. Super cool. Then I got a, I had my V6 that I've been sitting for a long time that we've been trying to get to run and figure out the ignition system. And uh, Ish and Eric finally got that with help, with outside help. So whoever sent me the email, please let me know. That was awesome. That that was a big help for those guys. They got they got it working. But when I, you know, and, and the thing's been sitting for a year or more probably, and it never dawned on me that I should, probably should check it and make sure that the motor's probably good. <laughs> and I did that right when we needed to have it run, and it was not good. So I went to the wrecking yard, had a, had another one pulled, brought it out. The first one was an L67. This one was an L32, so a Series 3 motor with the better blower on it and slightly higher compression. And I put it on there, and it seemed like I, and it actually ran, which was awesome, but it seemed like it was down on power. So in part one, we fixed that problem, which turned out to be the cylinder heads. It needed it needed uh, valve seats and a valve job. But once we put those on there, the thing is run like perfect. I've beaten the heck out of this thing. I don't know. I, I need to go back and check and see how many runs we've made, but I've made a lot because we ran a bunch of testing on pump gas and E85. We now run it, as you guys saw in part two various different boost levels with different pulley sizes. We've even put replaced the blower that came with the motor from the wrecking yard and put the other blower on that somebody loaned me. And if you're the guy that loaned it to me, thank you very much. Um, and, and it had a snout on it so that we could, you know, easily just bolt and unbolt the pulleys. So we tried different pulleys on. We tried a 3.4 and a 3.2 along with a stock pulley. We tried long tube headers, which what do you guys think about that? The long tube headers really didn't do very much. I did see a slight decrease in the boost with the headers, which tells me that there should have been some power there, but the air fuel and the timing were exactly the same and it really showed nothing. So maybe, maybe I had some people comment and we kind of figured that this was the case because I was going to test the headers again after we got to a higher power level, after we put a cam in this thing and, and cylinder heads and we'll do the header test again to see if there's a difference. We think that there will be at a higher engine speed or a higher power output, but the headers on that combination didn't show any power. The air intake also, the, that throttle body is big enough for that air intake or for that power level. So there's nothing there. But then, and this test was actually run before I did those. <laughs> I just put it third because it was, the, it was the most important one or the most exciting one. So we ran the compound boost. And what I did was took a, the GT45 that I run on just about everything. And, and by now, those guys should be paying because I've done hundreds of tests with that thing. But we ran the GT45 on there and with an air to water intercooler. And we fed the blower into the throttle body. We fed the blower boost from the turbo. And I, and I went over this in the video that it's important to note that we, um, the wastegate on the turbo setup, because this was just a, this was already assembled from another test. So I had the elbow that we always use that has a wastegate provision. It has a um, T3 
V-band flange on one end and then has the T4 turbo flange on the other. And so the turbo was already on there and the drain line was already on there. The fitting for the feed, the oil feed was there. The exhaust was even on the turbo. So it was basically ready to go. And if you saw in the video on the exhaust for the 3800, what I did was we took the section that was still remaining from the factory exhaust and then we just welded, Troy did a weld a three inch V-band on there. And so we could run an elbow to simulate the exhaust, obviously very short and three inch free flowing. But once we took that off with a simple V-band clamp, we could bolt the turbo assembly on. Now, Troy from Westec also welded, we took the pan off because we were taking things apart, but we took the pan off and he welded on a drain fitting. So all we had to do was run an oil fitting from the oil feed and we teed that into where we're taking the reading from the dyno, get the oil fitting on there, it had the drain fitting, we put the turbo on. I ran the same air to water intercooler that I always run on everything, it's the Pro Charger one. The intercooler was between the turbo and the supercharger. So under the supercharger, no intercooler. After the turbo and intercooler, unfortunately, I don't have any uh, air temperature data for, data for you. I don't have any back pressure data for you. And I, and I don't even have the boost between the turbo and the blower, which we're, I'm pretty confident it was seven pounds where the wastegate is, the spring is set at seven pounds. We were taking the boost reference for the turbo, for the wastegate from the turbo between the turbo and the blower. And so it should be seven pounds. We've run that before in the video that I have up where we ran twin turbos with the guys at HP Performance blowing into the factory. Uh, I think it's an M112 or M122, the supercharger on the O3 Cobra motor. And that in that case, that one was running about 11 pounds and we were blowing seven pounds into it. And once we regulated it between the turbo and the blower, then we had no problem. It stayed at seven pounds. The turbos were supplying seven pounds. And then the blower was kind of artificially enhancing it and compounding it like it did here. So, and that's exactly what happened. We ran the blower was running with a stock pulley in the way that we pulled it. I showed you guys all the boost curves. We ran, uh, it made about 10 pounds at 6,000 RPM or at 6,100 RPM on, the, on that run. Then we added seven pounds of boost from the turbo. And when we did that, <laughs> we got 23 pounds. So seven plus 10 is the new math. This is must be common core stuff. Um, e e there's obviously a lot of reasons for that, but, but now equals 23. So if you guys are ever in your math class and you somebody asks you what, what seven plus 10 is, you can tell them 23 and you can tell them that you learned that here. <laughs> but it was very cool. And then also along the way, when I had the thing just supercharged, we ran it on 91 because lots of guys do. The thing that I have to say about the 91 test is that we can run more timing on the engine dyno than you can out on the street. Out on the street, it's a lot hotter environment for the very least. We run it at about 140 degrees. So unless you were cooling yours down at the track, 240 degrees and running it, you wouldn't get what we got. We have a we have lots of airflow in the dyno. There, there are big um, suction fans on it. There's a lot of airflow going into it. it. It's it's you know it's really hot. It was it was 104 or five degrees probably, but still that's a lot hot or a lot colder than it would be if you were grabbing under hood air, which is not a good idea. Um, we also had a free flowing exhaust, which made sure that there weren't any restrictions. That's going to create more problems with. Um, with detonation. And so we didn't have any detonation. We ran on um, the supercharged combination. We ran, we started the load in at about 15 degrees. And then we ran a peak of about 22 degrees of timing. We ran these all at about, you know, 11 and a half, 11, seven, right in that range. And then we were, so we ran that, uh, with pump gas and then we added E85 and, and as it always does, and spent, this is a, this is a perfect application for E85 because it's a roots blower, which is not terribly efficient. It's non intercooled. Again, it's going to add to the hotness. And so running E85 in this combination is definitely a good idea. And it showed exactly what, what we're, what we have come to expect from E85. It made lots of power and we were able to add a little bit more timing with the E85 and we brought it up to, we were getting, you know, 290 horsepower or so right in that range. So it worked out very good. And then we added the turbo on top of that. And then with the turbo, we ran it with 110 octane because I didn't want to run 91 octane with a compound deal at 20 plus pounds of boost. So we put race gas in it and then I did a comparison between race gas and and E85. And once again, as it always does, the E85 makes more power just by putting it in. And then you can theoretically add more 
timing, although the amount of timing that you can run, that you can add from E85 versus the 110 would be much less than you can in the comparison between E85 and pump gas. So it, it evens that out a little bit more, but still there are big gains from E85, even just all by itself with no change in timing. So it's a good test. I wish I would have got more data, but I had to thrash to get this thing ready. And that's all I was trying to do. Oh, uh, Tom said uh, it was an M112 on the, on the O3 Cobra. Um, and so I was just trying to thrash to get it ready because we were going to take that thing off of the dyno where I was doing all the late night testing and prepping and then put it on the dyno and do the kind of what I had done um, on engine masters, but with more data, a lot more data so that we could, I would know that it was going, what I was trying to find out is just that the motor was alive and that it would survive once we added the turbo to the situation. I, I picked basically the minimum values for both these. I picked the, the biggest blower pulley, the factory blower pulley, and then picked a seven pound spring. Now I could have gone with a two or three or five pound spring or whatever the smallest one I have is, but I think usually seven pounds is, is kind of the minimum deal. And we just ran the reference line. We didn't run a boost control or anything. We just ran the reference line from the outlet of the turbo basically. And I, this was actually after the intercooler um, down into the wastegate. So there was no controller on it at all. It was just running on the gate. And it was really cool testing because, you know, to see that boost going up was awesome. The thing is, the thing that's kind of a little bit disappointing for me on this one is that there's so much boost. And, and maybe this is because it's a V6. Maybe it's because it's artificially high because of the compounding. But I, I kind of would have expected a little, I was hoping for a little bit more power at that boost level. Because I know that if we took that same motor and got rid of the blower and ran 23 pounds on it, it's going to make a lot more power than we made on the compound deal. So it, it works really well. Um, and, and one of the things that I went over, and, and this will be the last of this bit, this discussion, is that on the compound setup, it's really cool just because it's cool because you have a turbo and a blower. So there's reason enough just to have that. So when you open the hood that you have two of them, so you can tell, yeah, it's, is that supercharged or turbocharged? Yeah, it's both. Cause that's awesome. The other thing that can, can come into play is if we put a 96 millimeter turbo on this thing, having the blower there instead of not having the blower there would definitely help us spool up a big turbo the 96 is an exaggeration, but even a 78 millimeter, 78, 75 gen two, like I have from VS racing or something that's more toward the thousand horsepower range for turbos, having the, the, a, a supercharger on there would help spool that up because it effectively makes this just like I've always talked about with the, all of the other videos that I've done, the O3 Cobra and all that stuff. It just turns a less powerful motor into a more powerful motor, makes the motor think it's bigger. You can phrase it however you want, but basically it would take a, you know, a, a 200 horsepower motor in this case and make it a 300 horsepower motor. In this case, it's probably going to take a 170 horsepower motor and make it into a near 300 horsepower motor when we run it on E85. So that obviously will help spool up the turbo. But then the other side to that coin is at what point do, do we have diminishing returns? And then how do you evaluate that? Like with me, I was looking at versus boost. So at 23 pounds with just the turbos, we would make a lot more power. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it would be an interesting test and I might do that, but we'd have to run a different intake manifold or we could just gut out. A lot of guys have been suggesting gut out the blower. And we've done that before um, on the, I think we did that. I thought that we had tried it on this motor, but I don't think we did. Um, back when I ran the L67, I'm trying to think back when we, I, I don't think we ran that with a turbo. Um, but you could gut that out and that way you could maintain the same intake manifold. Because if we put the intake manifold on from an, an NA version, whether it's one of the front wheel drive versions or the F body aluminum intake, whatever it is, that's going to change the power output because there's going to be runner length in there. And there isn't, there's very little in the manifold that on this L32 or the L67, these, these supercharged versions have very, very short runner manifolds, which is not ideal because we're only, we're making peak power at less than 6,000 RPM right now because it has such a mild camshaft in it. But that's the next thing I wanna do. I wanna do a camshaft because this thing needs a 
218, 224, 224, 230 kind of thing to really get this thing to make power. And then obviously it needs a ported head as well. And so if there's anybody out there that's looking to, to port a head, please let me know. Uh, I can send you heads and they can be ported um, because it's, it's going to need more airflow. What I want to do, the other thing that I'd like to try is obviously we're going to try the header test at a higher power level, but the other headers that I would like to try are an F body set of headers. I want to try a, a, a conventional set of headers that are not this crossover front wheel drive set. I'd like to try a rear wheel drive set, um, you know, just a three into one kind of thing to see if there's any difference, if there's any gain to be had from that design header versus the one that we ran on here. Obviously the stock exhaust manifold at the power level that we were testing at had more than enough flow for that because we didn't see any power. But I'd like to see some scavenging some, from some real long tube headers if the V6 headers for a Camaro or Firebird or that kind of thing would actually do that. So lots of cool things coming up. I'm, I'm excited about this motor. It's working really well. It's taken all of the abuse, even the compound stuff. So it's it's really pretty cool. So let's see what you guys got going on um, and we can talk more about turbo stuff. So let me start here. Thanks for showing the 3800 some attention and also running it on a Holly. The stock ECU has always held these engines back. I, I think so too, unless you can go in and absolutely program them. It's not, it's not, um, you know, you, you need to be able to change the air fuel and timing to make it work with whatever modification. If you're going to do a back-to-back -back test, it has to be identical. Uh, somebody said Mac daddy stopped selling adapters. We have, we had bigger injectors on this. We didn't use the stock injectors. We used um, 80 pound injectors on this. So Josh is showing the final boost number, how you multiply the pressure ratio of the supercharger and the turbo. Uh, Dodger brothers, but you have comp with the compound, you have parasitic losses associated with driving the blower. You do. And, and also, and I, and I think that I would argue because the blower has to process more air now that the parasitic loss of the blower at that speed flowing more air would actually be even greater, but you're not talking about very much and adding the turbo obviously makes the thing a little more efficient. <laughs> it gets a lot more air in there and makes a lot more power. The NA3800 only makes 200 horsepower. The supercharged version makes even less with lower compression and milder camp time. Yeah, that's why I back that off to 170 horsepower. I was going to ask Richard if higher octane gas is any good for my 76 Cutlass. Does your 76 Cutlass should be lo a low compression motor, right? It still might be detonation prone, which would which uh, higher octane would help that. Roots blowers take a ton of power in a compound setup. It's pretty low PR on the blower, but the actual pressure gain across the blower is really high. Need to upgrade my Owen Silverado half ton. Pretty pricey. To an early 2000 Silverado three quarter. So you want to upgrade all the suspension? You want to make it, you want to put all the heavy duty stuff in it? The compound test is wicked cool and it worked nifty. Twin GT45 on an LSA blown LS would probably be cool combo. Big S turbos being artificially spooled faster from the help of the blower. That That's kind of what we went over, but, but actually that motor, that LSA motor is already big enough to spool some pretty big turbos and already make lots of power if you look at the big bang stuff. Uh, could you set it up so you could switch the supercharger off until you needed it? You could flip a switch and suddenly able to barrel roll your car when you stomp with the pedal. I don't, I think that that's a little bit of exaggeration, but that's awesome. Um, you could set up a clutch system if you wanted to do that, but there's no need to do that. The supercharger already has a bypass valve. So while it's spinning, it's not processing any air or, or any boost. So the amount of loss that you're getting, especially with the factory stuff, because they're, they're really, 
um, good about that. They want to make sure that they don't lose a lot of um, uh, MPG. So they want to make sure that while the thing is doing the test procedure, that's why they, that's one of the reasons that they put the bypass valve in there is so that um, you can reduce the pumping losses of the blower and also to obviously cool the charge too. If you guys took a look at the boost curves on the video, you could see that the at our I think we started at 32 or 3300 RPM on the load in the turbo is already all in on this. And I and I suspect um, although the GT45 isn't isn't fantastic for response rate, um, but with the supercharged combination, it, it did very well. And it, and it had all of its seven pounds that it was providing, I'm, I'm assuming, um, was in by our load in. So I'd have to start the load lower to find out if it had, if there was a boost response issue. Um, if I was going to run uh, a motor at 400 or 450 or 500 horsepower, like we ran here, I wouldn't pick the GT45 for the 3800. I'd pick something smaller. I'd pick like the, the GT3582 or something, like, something along those lines. I still have a set of the Mac Daddy parts. I, I need to get their adapters and their blower and stuff back to them. Uh, Mike Johnson on NA is dynamic compression more important than static compression for, for octane rating. A lot of guys like to use it. I talked to Billy Godbold at length about that. And I, I told him my opinion that this, this dynamic compression that people are using is one small piece of the puzzle for determining detonation and, and your octane needs, because it's not the end all for determining what's going to happen, what's going to cause it. There are a lot of other things that cause detonation in your motor. You could have hot spots. The air intake temperature is a huge one. The um, exhaust restrictions are bad. Um, the temperature, the water temperature of the motor, the design of the chamber. I mean, there's lots of things that go into this that have nothing to do with just the relationship between static compression and your cam timing. That's not the end all. Uh, Kyler, you're going to put an M90 on your four liter V6 Ranger. That will be cool. That's a good application for it. The hardest thing is going to be making the adapter plate. But once you do that, you know, obviously getting the tune right. So Joel, you have the uh, you have the bypass valve wired up to a boost solenoid so that it opens up at 15 pounds and allows some of the air to skip the blower. Did have you ever tested it both ways to see if there's any gain in doing that? The the um, bypass hole is is so small. I wonder how much flow goes through that. Ho hopefully you ported it and <laughs> radius the entry. It would be cool if there was enough room. Is there even more room? I can't remember now. I'd have to look at the photos. Is there even more room in the plate and or in the blower to put a big valve in there, to put like a 65 millimeter throttle body size valve in there? Then you could bypass a lot of it. So let's see, I need to catch up here. Uh, 360 Magnum. We did run a bigger cam on the on the crate motor that West Tech has. I haven't got a cam yet for mine. I have one coming from the guys at UT Awesome that sent me the kegger mod that we did. So there is a cam coming for that. And it has a tighter LSA, which will be beneficial for the lower engine speeds. And we're going to try other stuff too. The nothing has happened on the Barra. In fact, I, I, I wish the people that I'm working with on the bear would come get the bears and <laughs> take them out of my storage. Cause I don't know when I could get to them. Um, I want to do them, but, the, but just like with this V six, there's lots of stuff that I have to solve on the bar bar <laughs> before I can run it. So it, it may sit for a while.
Julius, the Jaguar blower. Um, Tom, Tom, I think sent me an adapter plate to run the M122 or the M112 on an LS, and I haven't got to it yet. So Tom, I haven't forgot. I, I want to do that, and that will be another low buck thing, like the adapter thing, like the adapter test that I did. Claims are forty to eighty-five horsepower for porting the Eden. That's such a that's such a big spread. Oh, selling the okay. I see. Ka, you're, you're talking about selling a half ton and buying a three quarter ton. Well, if you're towing and stuff, it's you know having the. Although I've towed a lot of stuff with my half ton. Would it be more efficient to run the supercharger boost through the turbo? You want to put the supercharger before the turbo? That's that's going to be hard to do. <laughs> yeah, we could do nitrous on before the to help spool the turbo up. That always helps. Next test is a turbo blowing into a procharger, blowing into a roots blower, blowing into an engine. Give it more turbo and slow. I don't know how much more we can slow the blower down. Does anybody have a, do they make pulleys that are bigger than factory pulleys for the, um, the uh, hubs? Where is, uh, Dean, I didn't see, I didn't see fast Stang's comment. Did I, did I miss it? Is that, is that about the, um, Piston swap thing. When are you going to put up the 360 piston flip video? Those guys are crying and it's going to be, I, I didn't do a video on that. That's an engine masters TV show that they did. So that's, that's, I didn't do a video on it. So I'm not putting anything up. I, all I did was we did at the last second, did a um, David and Steve, before they were going to leave to go home, I asked them if they would be on my live feed, which I was going to do anyway, because I hadn't done any for a while because I was so busy doing all the stuff and they agreed and, and they came on and it was awesome. They, they were, they wanted to answer questions and do all the stuff. And it was great um, for the record. And I'm not going to go into this in great detail because there's really no need to, but um, all of the stuff that Tony was talking about when he did his Tom Cruise on the couch and went ranting and raving on his live feed thing, that's all made up <laughs> any, any response he had, any comment that he had about me is act 100% untrue. Um, I reached out to him before he went on that live feed. I reached out to David Vizard, who I'm doing stuff with. who's going to be porting some 2.2 turbo heads. So all of that stuff. And I've already reached out to Tony. I sent him a text after I, I told him on his live feed that I was going to do this test, that I was buying the motor for specifically for this test because I wanted to have data. I don't care about whose opinion it is. I wanted to have data. Told him on the show he was going to do that. Sent him a text when I got the motor, said, I'm testing this motor. Sent him a text after we had run the test and said, look, I want to get together. Told David Vizard when he was when, when David told me that he was going on the live feed that night because I knew nothing about it because, again, 18-hour days, I wasn't on social media. Told David, ask Tony when we can both go on his show so that we can sit down and talk about this. There's so much more to talk about. I sent Tony a, a, a text today, and so he's still very angry. I wish that, that we could get together and talk about this because none of what he's saying and none of his anger should be directed at me because I, I reached out. I did everything. I want to work with him. I want to give him even more data because there's a lot more stuff to talk about. So if he wants to, I'm game and I, and I will sit down with anybody and talk about this at length and tell you guys everything that happened. Um, so I got, you know, like I said, I, that emotion part of it, that doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from anybody else. It only comes from him. So I, I hope that he gets over that and then, then calmer heads prevail and then everything works out. Let's see. 500 wheel horsepower M90. That seems like a lot, but I've, I've never spun them to the moon and I've never also never spun them this, I've never done a lot of testing on this Gen 5 blower because when I was doing this stuff back with the Rammer technology, we were doing it with the um, the Gen 2 or 3 blower. 
So it was not nearly as good as this one had a different opening and stuff. And we never, we, I think the smallest pulley we ever put on was a, was a three inch pulley. And, and I never did anything to the motor to make the motor really good, which is really what you need to do on a roots blower, especially this M90. What you want to do is get the boost down on the M90. So you want to get the speed of the blower up, but the boost pressure down. And you do that by making, by putting it on a really powerful NA motor. So if you can do really good ported heads, really good camshaft, let the thing run some RPM and have the M90 supplying extra airflow that it can. Because I think what, what I would like to do at some point, maybe Jim Bell has a blower dyno and I'd like to have him run one of these M90s, one of these factory ones and spin it as fast as he can. He doesn't, he has drive assemblies that can spin it as fast as we want. So we can spin it as fast as we want and he can regulate it to any boost pressure we want. And what I want to do is I want to get the thing like spinning whatever the max RPM is and then start reducing the boost. We'll start at 10 pounds and then go down to five and eight and down to one or whatever we can do and find out what is the maximum flow rate of this thing? What will it actually support in, in terms of airflow? Um, because the, the amount of power that it will support actually goes down as you go up in pressure. So if you can get the boost down, good things will happen. Uh, why use a compound setup and not just more boost with turbos? It's only about booster response or something more. I just told you that because it's really cool because you have a blower and a turbo. If you're talking about going drag racing or whatever, then you should just use, just size your turbos and your motor and the NA power output all to do the thing that you needed to do. You don't need the blower to do that. Obviously, we look at the all the LS stuff and any and anything else that has turbos on it. It's pretty easy to get like insane kind of power levels with just the turbos, but the having the blower kit can do other things. James, could you do some in-depth 90s LT1 testing? I, I am going to do more LT1 testing. Thanks for the upside down thumbnail. Is the thumbnail upside down? It shouldn't have. Sometimes when I save it and it comes over, sometimes it flips over when I put it on YouTube. I'm going to have to change it. Uh, Mike, normally higher static compression goes along with higher octane, but not always. Cause if you go up and look at, look at what factory stuff is doing, look at an 11 to one, um, LS motor an LS three, it's, it's near 11 to one. It's a little under that. Um, obviously they're doing other things with direct injection, which, which helps with the detonation threshold, but even on a near 11 to one LS three, you can run pump gas on that. So as long as you can manage with knock sensors, you can manage the timing and stuff. And so you can run that actually on like 91 octane pump gas. And they, they make sure that it will do that. When you start changing stuff, you have problems. But in that case, if you were to get rid of the factory cam and put more camshaft in it, it is probably less susceptible to, I mean, it would be less likely to detonate as you go up in cam timing. Uh, T H man. Oh, oh, he caught it. He, <laughs> he definitely did. Uh, Julius, where did it, where did it get sent? Did it get sent to my house or did it get sent to West tech? What gap are you running on the spark plugs on the 3,800? We started out with the ones that came from the wrecking yard, but those were really high. So we gapped them down and then we eventually put, I think we put a probably a nine a Denso Iridium, which is probably like a 27 or a 31. And those have pretty tight gaps in them. The gaps are, those are like 21 or 22. Kyle, yes, we did use the factory blower that came on the, on the 3800. It was all done before I even went and got the other blower with the, um, with the smaller pulleys. Uh, 
And I also got from the guys at ZZP, I bought these, I bought the removal tool and the, and I also got police from um, South Florida police headquarters. So I want to make sure that I'm not saying the wrong thing because they're all mixed up now, but I got stuff from both of them and I got a pulley removal, but I didn't want to do that on the blower because I didn't want to not be able to go back to the stock uh, pulley size because we would, would use that for a lot of things like this test on the, on the compound stuff. Yeah, uh, fasting. That, like I said, it, it, if we had, if Tony, I told him this on the text that I sent him today. I said, look, if if you gave me five minutes and we talked, you'd be apologizing and we'd be off down the road doing stuff together. Because his problem is that there's no communication and he doesn't know what happened. He's reacting. He's inputting things that he thinks happened and maybe wants to happen so that he can continue to be angry and be mad about the results or whatever. Like I said, to me, more data is always better. I, a guy that doesn't want more data, that's that's not really for me. Um, I hope, like I said, I hope that he comes down and, and everybody works everything out because uh, I'm doing lots of stuff with David, which I'm excited about. Um, as a matter of fact, that's why or that's why um, Visor called me the day before any of this stuff started happening. He called me and said, Richard, I need you to call me because I have a window, a time frame when we can do this 2.2 liter turbo cylinder head, this aluminum head, I can do the porting on it. So I'm like, ah, super cool. And um, he said, but I need to know when you can send it. So again, 18 hour days, I didn't get back to him until the next day. Cause when I get on the phone with David Visor, it, <laughs> there's, it's going to be some minutes. Um, so I called him and said, David, look, I'll, when I, when I go home from all this chaos, from all this testing that all these days like this, I'll pick up the head because I had to pick it up from the gentleman that I got the GLH turbo from. I'll pick up the head. I'll get it home. I'll try to clean it and box it up and get it sent to you. So he's like, okay, super cool. That would be great. That, that way we can get it and do all the testing. So that's what that whole conversation was. And then he tells me that, hey, I'm going on live with Tony. And I said, look, good. I said, I have so much information. Please ask him if we can get on, you and I can get on together. Because we've been talking about this for months, months and months. Richard, you and Dave Advisor need to get on together. Yes, we do. It'd be awesome. So, you know, like I said, it's just a matter of sitting down and talking and everybody being happy. And then, and then we could do lots of cool, lots of cool stuff. There are front mount intercooler adapter plates available. Oh, to run out from the blower and then back in. That would be kind of interesting. You could use a large centrifugal in front of the smaller turbo. Australia no longer gets motor trend, no engine masters. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Could you test the M90 on one of the Barras? I like calling them Barras because then I can say Amara Barra and Barra. It's just, it just rolls off the tongue better. I, I actually, in the, in the test on the piston flip thing, the thing that amazed me has nothing to do with uh, all of this like emotional <laughs> instability. It's, it's about how repeatable this motor was from the wrecking yard. This thing was repeatable within the decimal point of one horsepower. And the, you don't get that a lot. It, this thing was amazing. I was very, I was happily surprised because it's one of the things when Freiberger called me and said, Hey, Richard, can you come down and, and sit in for Brulee? Cause he's probably not going to be able to make the shooting schedule. I said, look, anything for Brulee, he's my guy. You know, he's my brother. I will do anything for the guy. I love him. So, and he said, look, I know that it's short notice, but do you have any um, tests that we can do that you haven't already done that would be good for engine masters that would fit in this <laughs> compressed time window like you're on your way down right now? And I said, yeah, I got a couple. I have like two, two or three of them. The Hemi broke. <laughs> the V6 was kind of iffy. Um, but I said, look, we can do this piston flip deal on my Magnum. That's why I bought it. So I could do this test. I'm obviously doing lots of other tests on it too, because while I have it on there, we've got to test cams and heads and blowers and nitrous and all kinds of stuff. So I said, but if we're going to do this, it has to be precise. If if we're looking for 10 or 20 horsepower and it, and and our repeatability is with one horsepower, that's fine. If we're looking for one horsepower and our repeatability is only within one horsepower, that's not a test. That's not accurate. Lucky for us, 
it was not that this thing was like rock solid when you get the when you get the and it takes a little bit of juggling because to get the water temperature exactly what you want at the right time as the oil temperature um it takes a little bit of fi uh, finagling so it takes a lot of doing to get three runs at exactly everything the same the air fuel and the timing thing are easy the water and the oil temperature are the things that are difficult to juggle but once you get those exactly the same or within one or two degrees of each other then then the thing is like dead repeatable and the thing that's interesting that a lot of people don't realize is when you're doing that kind of test what things can throw it off that's why when somebody tells me oh i got 20 horsepower from this i'm like okay let's sit down and talk about the test procedure <laughs> because something else changed i already know that it did from that result but i could change the water temperature and oil temperature and not by dramatic amounts but we could change the power output by six horsepower and eight foot pounds of torque that's a dramatic amount given what we were looking for and and how we were trying to test so just by altering those not the air fuel and not the timing just those two temperatures we could change the power output by that much and if you look at it as a percentage of this very low horsepower motor which was about a 300 horsepower motor and a 400 foot pound motor that's a lot so that's a big difference so you have to be really really strict and i was i also thought it was awesome that the piss and flip thing I didn't know about, especially after going down the rabbit hole and looking at all of the things that change. There's a lot of things that change. And and to Freiburger and Dulcich's credit, they went down that rabbit hole. I mean, we called Billy. They called the guys from JE, the guys from uh, Molly, the guy, so one of the other piston manufacturers, the guys from Total Seal. I mean, they wanted to find out exactly what changed and to what extent. And then we were worried about if there is a, power change what if there's 10 horsepower then what does that get attributed to because you have five or six things that change what was responsible for the change it's amazing that there was no change at all that it was perfectly repeatable even given the fact that we had moved the pistons and rings to other holes and i saw that before when i was doing the the big bang stuff on one of the big bangs i took all the rings off all the pistons ground them all to 30 ish plus or minus so that they wouldn't touch, put them all back on, not on the ones that they came out of and put it back in and ran it again. I was looking for big changes. I was looking for low buy. I wanted to make sure that the motor was still good, but it still repeated with within a couple of horsepower. And when I say it repeated within a couple of horsepower, I'm saying that it repeated within a couple of horsepower and I didn't even try. I didn't, exactly matched the oil. I didn't even, didn't, even, didn't even have oil temperature hooked up when I did that test because I wasn't looking for that. I was looking, okay, it made like 355 horsepower before I did this. It's still like 354 or 356 or whatever the number is. It's still right there. It's still happy. It's ready. It's safe. And now I'm going to run a million pounds of boost on it. So, and it, and it happened one other time when I did the same thing on the first big bang stuff. What I did was uh, on that one, I was a little more conscientious. I took the pistons out. We cleaned all the, the gook out of the oil rings. We gapped the rings. We cleaned all the ring lands out. I put, and then we gapped the rings. I put the stock rings back with the piston that it came out of, out of the hole that it came out of, but we ball honed the cylinder and then put them back in again. Same thing. I mean, it made the same power. So, and I'm not telling you that piston rings don't matter or any of that. What I'm saying is that the rings in the junkyard motor were already worn in and we and then it repeated perfectly because one of the guys suggested oh you need to use a brand new motor for this no you don't a brand new motor would be the worst thing in the world because it's going to break in while we're doing this the junkyard motor is already broken in and i was amazed that everything like that everything repeated even after doing that it, it was really an amazing test Well, Dean, I, I know what you're saying it's one test, but every time I've asked somebody else, they don't have tests. All they have are opinions. And all of the opinions, no matter who it comes from, I put in an opinion pile, including mine. Every, every one. It doesn't matter who it is. Smokey Eunuch, Joe Sherman, Uncle Tony, David, any the President of the United States. I don't care. If they say this works or this doesn't work, that's an opinion. If I say it works or it doesn't work, that's an opinion. If I give somebody 
data, that goes in a different pile. And though, and things from the opinion pile don't hold the same weight as something from the data pile. That's why I want the data because it's real. It's a real thing. If somebody asks me what happened, I can tell them when I did a direct back-to-back -back test, here is what happened. Of course, that's not the whole story, but <laughs> people were getting all over me about, oh, you're no Smokey Eunuch. No, I'm not. The guy was amazing. I know Joe Sherman either. I've met Joe. I was there when he did his engine masters thing. But the thing that they're attributing to Joe is kind of funny because he didn't do a back-to-back -back test. In a story that he did long ago for Car Crafter Hot Rod, he built up some 302 Ford motor, I think. And, and in the process of building it, he flipped the piston because it was a, a, a factory offset style piston and he flipped it. And he just said that in the story. He didn't say, I tested this back to back. He didn't say, it, you know, this is going to help it make more power. He didn't say any of that. He, he said, I did this in this process because I think it's going to help. And so people took from that, that that's verification that it absolutely works. No, that's still an opinion. And, and, and to, I'm sure that, cause you know, that guy's a legend. I've seen what he does. He, he works magic. He knows how to make power and he's probably tested it, but I would want to see that data and not the speculation that people attribute it to. It's kind of funny. Rex, thank you very much. The M90 would, would eventually become a restriction to the turbo, the, meaning that, and by that, I mean that the turbo combination will make more power at the same boost level. Uh, Jesse, I posted all of the stuff on the L67 torque form already. But we're not, we're not like in this case, we ran the, the turbo at the lowest boost that we could. I'm not the lowest we could, but, but seven pounds. I mean, that's kind of the minimum that everybody starts at. And we also ran the supercharger with the biggest factory pulley. And, and so that was kind of the lowest deal that we could put together. We probably could go lower if we wanted, but I don't think there's any reason to. I have a TVS 2300 on my one UZ for a bit of supercharging setting. That, that's good. That, that will be a good combination for that. A 2300 is more than big enough for that motor. That should work out good. <laughs> I know, Dan, does anybody even pour 3800 heads or iron heads? I, I don't want to pour them. I'm not going to do it. I would, I'm sure I would just ruin them. I mean, I should, I'm sure I could make them a little bit better. But so I want somebody out there to port them that knows what they're doing, that they can get like, 220 or 230 or whatever they get out of these heads. Uh, Evan, do you, do you just go on to his stuff and, and look at the live feeds and see, you'll, you'll, you'll see it, it'll happen right away. <laughs> Um, I'm going to ask, have, have, I, have you figured out the issue of this? I haven't rerun it any, but I'm pretty sure it was belt slippage on the six liter with the, um, LSA supercharger. Porting iron heads isn't cheap. Aaron helped me build my five, three twin turbo. Well, you're in the right place. Ask away if you've got questions about it. A V10 cam sword fight. <laughs> I've never even tried to lift up a V10 cam. That might be pretty heavy. Yeah. Uh, Salvador, I have one 450, 454 motor. It's a Gen 6. It was pulled out of a wrecking yard. I don't even know if it runs right now. How many tacos would it take to roll the Omni motor? Uh, I'm in Australia. What EC are you running one on the on the Barrow? We may run the the MS3 Pro like we ran on the 4200 Amera Barra, but on this motor we're running the Holly HP, and that's what we're also going to run, which I'm very excited about on the 2.2 liter Chrysler because we got it running. I got the motor that we the the 
1984 600 draw through throttle body non intercooled <laughs> kind of bottom of the barrel um 2.2 liter omni motor we actually got it running thank and thank you ish from west tech who did awesome stuff and eric over there because they um i i, I don't know if you guys saw it i made i ls swapped the distributor on the 2.2 liter chrysler motor so i put the ls crank trigger on the distributor and so we could just pick up the four pulse in the in the distributor and it worked fantastic we started it up first with and, I'm, and I, you'll see a video and that might be up tomorrow i'm hoping we we started it up on um uh brake cleaner and then we then we actually hooked up the fuel injectors um the the fuel rail is still good even after the fire we checked that i put different we put 24 pound forward injectors in it i just wanted to start it up and see if it had oil pressure see if it runs, see if it was even alive. And it seems like it is. Let's see, let's get down here. Oh, Evan, you want me to get a professional ported job and then, then a home ported job and see what the difference is? Yeah, and the, the thing is, these heads are already cracked. <laughs> um, when I had them, when I had Derek at LNR, thank you, Derek, very much for doing that immediately when we when we needed it. Um, I had him because we tried to do the razor blade rebuild and just reseat the valves just by putting polishing the uh, grinding compound on them, but that didn't work. And so we took it back apart, took both the heads down, and Derek did both the heads. They needed seats and they needed a valve job. And once he did that, it, it worked perfect. But he said, look, both these heads are cracked as, as they normally are. And he said, but it doesn't look like it's going to get down to anything problematic for, for a little while. So you should be able to run on the dyno without any problem. The thing I don't want to do is put a lot of effort and time and money into porting these heads <laughs> only to have them be cracked and be junk. Uh, yes, you can import uh, the Barra motor. I have two of them from uh, one of the guys here. One of the things that we did um, on a test here, an EQ head of 360 with 283 to 290 knives. Yeah, if you can get an EQ head to flow of 280 or 290 CFM, that would be quite a bit. That would, that would make lots of power. Originally, I was going to send the iron heads to David Visor and have him port the Magnum heads. But one, I don't want to send iron heads to him and have him do it because that. I don't want him to work his magic on heads that are not deserving on a, on, and more importantly on a combination that is not deserving. Um, so the, the 2.2 liter Chrysler head is aluminum. It'll be easier to port. It's only a four cylinder and it, and it can, you know, it can do magic things. Um, but what I was going to say is one of the tests that we did also for engine masters was we did a nitrous test and we did nitrous tuning. And we found out that even when we were running the motor, like in the nines, <laughs> it didn't seem very responsive to us leaning it out on the nitrous to make more power. Um, I thought there was going to be a ton because I thought we were on the verge of misfire, but on a fairly big shot running at 9.8 or 9.9 .9 to one, um, we, we leaned it out and got it in the 11s and then even in the 12s and it just did not want to make any more power. Uh, what boost level? It's not a boost level that does it. It's not boost versus ring gap. It's ring temperature is what's causing the change in ring gap. So that can be caused by a lot of things. I don't know, Dean, I got to keep my eye on you. I, I sometimes feel nothing but shade. Can you fit the five four the Ford 4.5 liter engine supercharger on the 3800? You can fit any engine on any motor. It just takes the right kind of adapter. Yeah, I don't think the Grand National heads were anything special either. Uh, Julius, LSX block, you can or you buy one that already is in the States. You can email me. Uh, 
Um, we do run EGT sensors. I ran them in my five liter Mustang a lot. We don't run them a lot on the dyno anymore. Sometimes they do. Um, but usually we run O2 sensors. Sometimes they run both. Uh, Rex, I'm going to go with an AFR 300. I think the highlight can't, not too much duration. That, and that's a really good head. So you're going in the right direction if you start with that head. Have you ever done a compound turbo setup? Can you explain the mechanics of using a smaller turbo to light up an oversized turbo? Does it allow best efficiency at lower and higher RPMs? A compound turbo setup is more mostly done in diesel applications. I have a compound turbo video up and you can take a look at that. Um, if you're trying to get maximum efficiency at low speed and at high speed, it would be better not to do a compound turbo probably. It'd probably be better to do a sequential turbo like a lot of the factory stuff is. Uh, Eric Weingartner, that might work. He did reach out to me about doing some intake testing and now I completely forgot what it is and I should probably get back to him and talk to him. Porting a V8 small block Mopar or forward or small block Chevy iron has 80 hours. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, the ZZ guys don't, the aluminum heads you can't find anymore. Uh, I haven't seen a 3000 horsepower SR20 motor. That would be cool. And, and in that case, when you have, when you have to have the, the area where compounding would help and not for low speed and high speed power, compounding on a gas engine would help on an example like that, where you have a relatively small motor and you're trying to make massive amounts of power. And in this case, 3000 certainly qualifies for that. So you have to have a giant size or multiple giant size turbos. And then you can have a smaller turbo or smaller turbos to help get the motor up where it can then get the big ones going and actually make a lot of power. Can goats tell time, Dan? Port wall thickness under boost, forget finding water. Oh, Tim, Eric wanted you to test the same intake with and without the clover leaf. Okay, yeah, I think the problem is we didn't have a motor that I thought would work with the heads or with the intakes that he had. I, I, I would test that for him. Does carb size matter as much when boost is added compared to NA? No, it doesn't because you have a lot more flow potential of the carburetor. What you can get into is may, maybe not getting enough fuel flow. But if you run a blow through carburetor, we've run lots of power on 850s. Um, when guys on the 850 that we have from CSU, we've done 1300. When guys are going into the really big power stuff, they'll usually go to a blow through dominator like Mike Miller does that stuff. When looking at a compressor map, is there a way to see how the turbo would spool up to the, the pressure? The compressor map won't tell you that. You have to know because the, the spool rate of the turbo is going to be a function of the NA power output also. What the compressor map can tell you is if one will be better than the other on your motor, as long as you know what the power output and stuff is of your motor. What are the factors that make the 496 engine you built want over 40? The, the timing requirements are usually a function of um, bore diameter, but also uh, an awful lot to have to do with um, chamber design. Chamber design and chamber volume. Compression also. <laughs> There's a lot of things. In a California environment, no one sees ported heads. Well, why is why is why is California not seeing ported heads? I don't understand. <laughs> I was this close to offering you the port thirty eight hundreds. Uh, do you have some decent ones up here? I don't. I have two sets of heads. One of them is an L seventy six head. One of them is a um, the L thirty two heads. And I, and I think I would guess that neither one of them are any good. Uh, 
Does anybody know? I haven't looked at it to see. So Anthony's asking about comparing the, the L76 blower to the L32 blower, the Gen 3 and the Gen 5 stuff. That would be an interesting comparison with the same pulley size. But will the both of those blowers bolt on to the same manifold without a lot of rigmarole? <laughs> I like that word. Mike, likes are only 50% of watching, time's, <laughs> time's fleeting. That's right. I only have like one minute left. I got I, I to gotta get going. The green screen is good. Yeah, I want to, I've been practicing on green screen stuff and I need to get, the problem is I need to get more distance away so I can get the shadowing right and get the lighting right so that then the green screen program could recognize it and put something fancy up there. Like, I don't know, me, me sailing off a jump or lighting something on fire or whatever. Uh, no, Dulcich and, and, and Dave Vizard used to hang out together a lot, like for years, for, for four or five years in a row. Have you seen a carb shootout with boost? No, I haven't. Um, I haven't done that. How reliable were the Gen 6 454 with turbos? I We ran a couple of them with turbos and they work good. Uh, DJ Lamp, that sounds like a heck of a combination. 32 PSI, that's on a turbo L67. 700 rear or uh, wheel horsepower, that's quite a bit. Procharge Mopar, engine masters did a test on port matching and they were surprised at the results. What do they, I can't remember that test. What did they port? I probably wasn't there when they did that one. Let's see the nomadic wrencher get lighting. I use an old flat screen TV as a light box. I've we've bought light boxes. I have uh, stuff that I use down at West tech, but the problem is that the, the other problem that I have is I need a different camera and I'm definitely going to get that. I'm going to try to use, as a matter of fact, I might do that tonight. I'm going to try to use my SLR and see if I can do that because the if I can get the green screen farther back, then uh, the lighting, I can put lighting up at the screen and get rid of all of that stuff. And the farther I am away from that, the better it will be. Uh, are you a V8 man or a six-cylinder guy? I'm a dyno guy, so I, I don't care. A rotary, a four-cylinder, a three-cylinder I really like because of the sprint. Um, four so all the way up to 12s or 16s or whatever. Yes, Visor did write the book. And if you take a look at, if you guys have, I'm sure most of you guys have, but if you haven't, go over to his channel. If you want to learn about headporting, that guy's already forgotten more than most people know about it. So he's got a lot of good stuff up there, especially his most recent one. A um, lot of good porting information. JPL Performance, you're welcome. Is port matching necessary in a 5.7 Hemi with a 6.1 manifold? I I just put it on because I didn't know any better. So I, I'd actually like to take a look at that and see how bad the port mismatch is. Uh, I am planning on getting the GLH running. I'm really excited about just driving it around. Yeah, Dan, I agree. I, the, and, and everybody that I talked to, Visard included, and, and Dulcich, who's done lots of porting is, and is actually very good at it, they all say the same thing. The, the port matching part is, is the, the last thing that you do, and the, the bowl work is really kind of the critical thing. And then, and then and there are some heads that require specific areas because the maybe the pinch point is at a particular area and it really needs to be addressed. And so you have to do that. But usually, um, bowl work is really good stuff. The other thing on the piston flip test is that we, we, we reused the head gasket and reused the oil just to make sure that it was the same, which I thought was kind of cool.
Yeah, Monage and Ecotech is tempting, but you can add boost to anything. And if you already have the motor in there, adding the boost to it usually is an easier way to go. Just paint a wall green. I could do that too. <laughs> wall greens. <laughs> so funny. And we, we reuse obviously head, the MLS head gaskets all the time. Um, but, and, and we even got, when we were doing the piston flip test, this is how um, precise we wanted to be and how uh, conscientious we were. We got new head gaskets for it and then measured the head gasket and said, no, those fail pro head gaskets are about 10 or 12 thousandths thicker than the ones that came off. So we're reusing the ones that came off. You know, I think it was like, 43 and 54 or something like that. But we measured both of them and one was thicker than the other. So we're like, oh no, that's not going to work. And we did copper coat them. Yeah, we reuse the Felpro stuff too. I, I've done that on, when I do head swap stuff, like if I do, when I did the Ford or the LS or the Big Block or all the other head swap tests I did, the videos I did, we just reuse the head gaskets because that way you know that it's the same and you don't want to go through 15 or 20 or 30 sets of head gaskets. There's no reason to do that. Just throw them away. The The head gasket manufacturers like, you're going to do what? Yeah. And they said, you could totally reuse it. You're, it's on for like three or four runs and just take it off and put the other one back on. Um, you know, and it doesn't get hot enough when the way that we run it to where any of the stuff like transfers over to the head or to the, and if it does to the block, we don't care about that because it's going to stay on there. Yeah, Dan, that's a, that's a good trick on the head gaskets. All right, guys, I got to get going. It's good to it's good to be back. Hopefully, you guys took a look at the video. I'm going to try to get together the um, the startup on the 2.2, the stand start on the 2.2, which was awesome. And the one thing that, and so you guys know, the one thing that I did not get on video, um, but it but it was quite entertaining, is that the the fuel rail on the 2.2, it that particular one uses a, a regulator. So the fuel goes in and it's a return style. So the fuel goes in, it comes out, goes to the regulator and then goes back to the tank. The, um, I put a uh, vacuum cap over one end and we hose clamped it. When we turn the fuel pressure on, the, the, um, the cap <laughs> started ballooning and getting bigger and bigger. And it's just like, oh, and just like trying to bail out of the way, but he didn't want to hit anything. Like the camera was there and he didn't want to hit the camera and he didn't want to fall down. You want to break stuff, but it, it just blew out and, and sprayed E85 everywhere. Cause we started it up on E85, but the camera was not rolling when that happened, unfortunately. Uh, but it did make for an exciting time, but that's, but that's what we were doing. And then finally we put the right kind of thing on there and, and, and capped it and, and it all worked out, but that's what happens when you're trying to do stuff like this and start it on the stand. It was awesome though. So I'm going to get a video going. Thank you guys for showing up. I will see you all tomorrow. Do, 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 do.